In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. On this beautiful votive mass for the harmony of family and friends, uh, we have the ideal of what uh, Christian love is. As I've expressed many, many times, there is a radical difference between Christian love and the a misunderstanding or misuse of the word in much of a secular society or, uh, that uses that in the opposite, really, of what authentic or genuine love is. See, we have within our Christian scriptures, in John's first letter, God is love. That's what love is. And that is expressed in the Trinitarian God that we worship, we believe in who gives himself to us in his word and in his love, the Holy Spirit. And so when Paul gives us these different elements or qualities of love, he's speaking about Christ's love, who came to reveal to us the love of God, as the Holy Spirit did, and continues to do within our hearts, enlightening us, correcting us, guiding us. And the very first quality that Paul gives in this particular passage is let your love be sincere. See? And that is a beautiful description of the love of Christ. If anything else, his love was sincere. It wasn't, say, yes and no. It was always yes because he came in the sincerity of God's faithful love for us, the fidelity of God's love. That's what our love for one another is to be. But it's also, he says, to be effective. It's to be experienced. It's to be alive. See, not just I love you with a shrug of the shoulders. I love you. Do you not understand? I love you. It's what Jesus does right before the beginning of the celebration of the Eucharist. See, at the Last Supper, I have desired with desire, the strongest Greek word that you can, to express the intensity, the depth, the beauty of the other's love. I love, desire to share this with you. What is it that he wants to share with himself? That's the sincerity of love. And that's the effectiveness of love. See? And then he goes on to be able to say, love really should be the experience or expression of what has occurred to us in our prayer. Prayer is to energize us, to renew us, to transform us. That's the power of Christ's love, the power of the Holy Spirit. So. Our Christian love only comes out of prayer because everything else, we, apart from that, is what we make up, what we think love is. And that primarily in our society is our funny inner feeling. I feel attracted. I feel I love you. See? Well, it has much more to do than feelings, as important as that is. It has to do, as Paul says, faith active in love, compassion, kindness, fidelity, forgiveness, generosity, joy. And the last quality of these four qualities that Paul mentions in this passage from Romans, see, it is expressive in the work of hospitality. See, within the Hebrew scriptures and Christian scriptures, that hospitality of opening one's heart, opening one's resources, opening whatever is available that the other stands in need of. See? That is what Christian love is. And we can see how important it is in our Christian scriptures because Jesus and the disciples who went from village to village, see, depended upon the response of those whom they were proclaiming God's love to, to be immediately effective in their life so that they would have a place to live that evening, so that they would have food offered to them. And Jesus says, when it doesn't happen, and I imagine frequently it didn't happen, 
thing. I mean, it's wonderful to hear, to listen, but actually to put it into practice, that's another whole different realm that I'm not interested in. But many people did welcome him. And Jesus, when they don't welcome you, it means they didn't understand or receive into their lives the message that we bring to them, the activity of love, the self-sacrifice of love, the self-giving of love, as was in the life of Jesus. And so how did they survive? Because they, they were going and performing the work of proclaiming the gospel to the hospitality, not only of those whom they encountered, but those who supported them as that part of discipleship remained at home. Without them, they wouldn't have been able to do anything. See? And so we are a community. See? And I love the image of the family. That's how Jesus ends his ministry on the cross. He invites the beloved disciple, all of us, to take his mother hospitality because now she has no one to support her into his home. And of course, it's the home of love. The beloved disciple, the one who loved and the one who was loved. And so when we welcome people into our homes, we're welcoming them into our lives, our hearts, we do it out of this type of love, sincerity, not reluctance, see, that generosity and enthusiasm. Thank you for letting me minister to you in your needs. Because the end of the Gospel of Matthew, when I was hungry, when I was thirsty, when I was alone, when I was sick, when I was imprisoned, you ministered to me. That's hospitality. And it is involved in our prayer that we have come to celebrate the meal as well as the sacrifice that gives us life in order that we might become life for one another. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit.